Welcome back everyone. This is part two for this news report today for Wednesday, June 5th, 2013. All right, we're ready to continue here. U.S. bases and Gulf on high alert. American bases in the Arabian Gulf have been put on high alert in anticipation of any kind of fallout to the security deterioration in Syria and Iraq. A local daily reported yesterday, quoting a se senior military official familiar with the subject. The report also quoted Under Secretary of Kuwait, who described a proposed security agreement between the Gulf Cooperation Council countries as a protective wall. Of course, these are the Sunni uh, countries that have helped uh, fuel the unrest for the past two years in that region. Similar, uh, similar to those countries like Germany and other uh, countries, uh, whatever. Not so much Russia, but uh, Germany, European countries, UK, France, all, all of a sudden concerned about these jihadists going back to their native countries. I guess you call them native countries and uh, wreaking havoc now after they've been trained and stuff. Syria rights report bias says here mom on militants terrorist attacks. So Russia says certain states have used a biased United Nations human rights report on Syria to censor the uh, Syrian government while ignoring abuses committed by foreign backed militants in the Arab country. They say the West and its regional allies including Qatar, Saudi Arabia and Turkey are supporting the militants fighting in Syria. The sharply worded statement added that the report also remains silent on other bestial acts by the militants, including many cases of sexual violence against women. That's just one of them. UN says Syrian rebel beheadings add to growing war crimes. Panel warns of increasing brutality on both sides. It says here another Human Rights Council panel reports details of the growing brutality on both sides of the Syrian civil war, detailing war crimes from both the government and rebel forces. It says Syria is in free fall, noted the chairman. The report warned of huge numbers of war crimes, at least 17 incidences that could be called massacres since mid-January. One of the most disturbing trends is towards beheadings of Syrian soldiers by rebel fighters, with the report noting that the rebels had been recruiting child soldiers and had a child participate in one of the beheadings. Uh, yeah, they also had the chemical attacks. Um, they were also kidnapping journalists, uh, sniping out journalists like the recent female one, Five, five Bahrainis fighting for al Nasr were killed in Syria. So there was just two uh, Bahraini soldiers that were um, killed uh, recently. And, of course, you had Bahrain actually saying that, uh, you know, there ne needs to stop being foreign fighters fighting with the Syrian government. So, so it says pro-regime Bahrain Gate website announced uh, the death, knowing that he was one of the armed battalion's commanders in Hamas. Injured Syrian militiaman dies on way to Zionist hospital. A wounded Syrian died on his way to a hospital in northern occupied territories of Palestine after crossing the border to seek medical treatment, the hospital uh, said on Wednesday. Another Syrian militant who was also taken to the hospital at the same time had been operated and was in stable condition. Zionist Army Radio later confirmed that both patients were Syrian insurgents fighting against the National Army in Qasir. Then on Monday, Zionist Defense Minister Yalan confirmed reports that the army had opened a field hospital and occupied Golan Heights to treat wounded mercenaries crossing the border, saying it's a humanitarian move, but Israel has no intention of opening a refugee camp. U.S. still unconvinced on Syria's chemical weapons claim. France claims proof of Syrian use by government. So it says here they claim that France has absolute undeniable proof that confirms the use of Syrian-based chemical weapons by the Syrian government in the ongoing, quote, civil war. But, uh, you know, again, this, this is a bunch of crap. UN says more evidence needed on Syria chemical weapons. A UN report on Syria says Tuesday there are reasonable grounds to believe that limited quantities of toxic chemicals have been used as weapons in at least four attacks in Syria's war. But no... They called on Damascus to allow a team of experts into the country, saying lack of access continues to hamper the commission's ability to fulfill its mandate. So it was originally the Syrian government that wanted the UN to come in here and inspect this uh, so that they can prove that these uh, rebels are carrying out these chemical attacks. But they want full access to their country, full access, not to the actual sites where, you know, where the things took place. So, um, so Syria said no. Uh, you have to also remember that um, that uh, it was almost at least twice, maybe even three times, that UN peacekeepers were actually kidnapped by the rebels as well. But see, they don't they don't investigate that either. They don't really care to uh, carry out any kind of uh, um, uh, responsibility responsibility 
um, on behalf of the rebels, only if it's the Syrian government. Syria's chemical weapons program was built to counter Israel, they say. So, of course, this is from Reuters. Syria, defeated by Israel in three wars and afraid of its arch enemy, had gained a nuclear arsenal, began in earnest to build a covert chemicals weapon program three decades decades ago, aided by its neighbors, allies, and European chemical wholesalers. So, you know, this is why it's such a big deal. This is who's really trumping all of this stuff up, is, uh, is Israel. Uh, whether they want to carry out their expansion or not, I think it has to do with that, Zionist expansion. And, um, of course, there's going to be a big, strong resistance. They can call it the axis of resistance, as far as Syria and Iran and kind of Lebanon, I guess you could say. So that access to resistance needs to be uh, uh, taken out before that. So, But they are concerned about uh, different types of weapons that Syria holds. Report says Israel has at least 80 nukes, so I don't know how really worried they could be when they have that. Uh, previous estimated had put Arsenal in excess of 200. A new report from Stockholm International Peace Research has weighed in with an educated guess about Israeli military secretive nuclear weapons program estimating the nation has around 80 strategic level nuclear weapons said 50 of the warheads are for jericho two medium range missiles with another 30 gravity bombs to be dropped from warplanes says that it's possible that smaller tactical nukes could also be in the nation's arsenal if true this would make israel's arsenal the smallest of the eight nuclear powers though roughly in line with india and pakistan who both like israel are not signatories to the nuclear non-proliferation treaty israel is the only nuclear weapon state in the middle east the u.s publishes details of missile base israel wanted kept secret it says here israel's military fumed monday uh, over the discovery that the U.S. government had revealed details of a top-secret Israeli military installation and published bid requests. They had promised to build Israel a state-of-the-art facility to house new ballistic missile defense systems, the Arrow 3. It says here, uh, this is with all Defense Department projects. Detailed specs were made public so contractors could bid on the $25 million project. They said if an enemy of Israel wanted to launch an attack against a facility, this would give him an easy how-to guide. Also saying this is more than worrying, it's shocking. Here's another link. You can go in there and check it out. It gives more details. Carry to U.S. Jews. Next few days will determine Middle East fate for the decade. Those who believe the Israeli-Palestinian status quo is sustainable and that the separation fence will bring security to Israel are lulling themselves into a delusion, says uh, the U.S. Secretary of State telling American Jewish community. It says if we do not exceed now, we may not get another chance. Says, uh, he's describing the current process as hardly a process at all. Right now, I have heard all of the arguments for why it is too difficult to end this conflict. Cynicism has never solved anything. He warned without a two-state solution, Israel will have to choose between its Jewish and democratic nature. Also stressing the need to recognize fundamental aspirations of the Palestinian people. Boston bombing suspect aspired to join anti-Israeli movement in Gaza. So Tamerlan and Zarnia hoped to join the anti-Israeli movement in Gaza, but ended up joining the Chechen rebels in Dagestan because he didn't speak Arabic. This is what Steve Cohen, Democrat from Tennessee, told The Hill in an interview on Tuesday. So I, somehow that led him to blow up a bunch of uh, people in America. I'm uh, not really sure. I guess if you're anti-Israel, you might blow up innocent people. So, you have cyber espionage bug attacking Middle East, but Israel untouched so far. So, how coincidental. Says this net traveler virus found in computers and diplomatic missions of over 40 countries, including Syria, Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, Qatar, and Iran. But no samples of the virus have been found uh, so far in Israel, says Kaspersky. Anonymous says Syrian electronic army hack Turkish government networks and leaked emails. So, Turkish government networks were hacked on Wednesday, compromising the private information of staffers in Prime Minister Erdogan's office. The group also stressed it will not share most of the hacked data because it respects people's privacy and does not believe in the full use of power against the weak. Turkish officials giving mixed signals on protests. The Deputy Prime Minister apologized to some beaten protesters. They appear to have, be having trouble getting on the same page as a massive protest continuing across the nation. As Erdogan is presented to protest as tantamount to terrorism and condemned by everybody, including Twitter, for criticizing him. Deputy Prime Minister uh, Imranik 
uh, seemed to be trying to calm the situation down when he basically insisted that the demonstrators were legitimate and apologizing for the large number of them beaten up by the police. Almost immediately, they muddied this apology by adding, I don't think we owe an apology to those uh, who have caused damage in the streets and tries to prevent people's freedom. They keep referring to the protesters as extremists and looters. Also, it says that these mixed messages have convinced many that the comments aren't sincere at all and that many demonstrators appear to be all the more determined to see Erdogan resign. So, it says here, Israeli experts says military coup possible in Turkey. The ongoing arrest in Turkey may lead to a new military coup in the country, says Israeli political expert. I believe Turkey is changing its image these days. It says even if Erdogan manages to suppress the wave of protests, they will have a crucial role in the history for the former uh, Ottoman Empire. And this could have been completely planned from the beginning, uh, trying to bait Turkey into joining uh, uh, the EU and um, using them to carry out what they were doing against Syria, and uh, they're not able to succeed. So, although Erdogan and his government, uh, who's been aiding the terrorists in the West uh, and trying to bring down Assad in Syria, even though I understand that, you know, that's pretty messed up that they did that and people have been trying to protest and it's finally breaking through, I wonder if the breaking through is very timely to create unrest on the border. Again, just another strategy, like what's going on in Jordan as well. So, I mean, those countries, they completely helped out the Zionists and then now that, uh, uh, that, uh, that Syria and them have been holding up, now all of a sudden they're getting thrown under the bus. So that's why it's not good to be allies with them. Italy leads charge against EU move to blacklist Hezbollah. France and Germany maintain their support Tuesday for a possible or, um, proposal by the UK to place Hezbollah's military wing on European Union's terror list. I gotta keep moving for time's sake, but you can go in there and check it out if you're interested. Iran presidential candidates outline social and cultural uh, policies. Germany will stick to NATO drone plans, says the minister. We have signed an agreement, and Germany usually sticks to its agreements, so says the German defense minister. Says that uh, despite the country's abandonment of a plan to buy its own unmanned reconnaissance planes, they will be committed to assisting funding NATO drones. U.S. will not change policy on drone attacks. The U.S. will continue to launch drone strikes inside Pakistan despite repeated calls from the Pakistan's new government for an end to the deadly attacks. Obama to appoint Susan Rice as National Security Advisor. Tom Donilon is resigning his post, says the White House National Security Advisor, and will be replaced by U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice. Al-Qaeda weapons expert says U.S. Ambassador to Libya killed by lethal injection. The group sought to kidnap Stevens for exchange of imprisoned terrorists. U.S. officials have not dismissed the terrorist as, uh, assertion. NATO to send team of experts to Libya. They'll send a team of experts to Libya to give technical advice to the Libyan military in terms of training as a North African country faces a flow of fighters from Mali. So back and forth, right? Common says what Zionist baby NATO wants is really to reinforce their occupation. France offers military aid to Libya to, quote, secure border from Islamists. After the NATO-imposed regime change in Libya, large quantities of looted weapons sparked a civil war in Mali. After the French military invaded Mali in January, many of the Islamist fighters in that area fled north into Libya. Then you got this article from McClatchy, a nice propaganda piece. Syria, like Iraq and Lebanon, is on path towards sectarian split. So they would like to have that. That's what they try to use to create these crises and regime changes. Gunmen set fake checkpoint, killed 16 in Iraq's Anbar. Gunmen ambushed a group of travelers at a fake checkpoint they set in western Iraq on Wednesday and killed at least 14 of them, what appeared to be the latest blow of violence in the country. So this is not the first time. They're very sneaky. Al-Qaeda in Iraq claims credit for killing Syrian troops in Iraq. So they killed 48 Syrian soldiers as well as nine Iraqi guards who were ferrying them back to Syria after receiving medical treatment. So uh, Al-Qaeda statement says they succeeded in annihilating the entire column of the army. U.S. State Department did concede that the attack was an act of terrorism since the uh, Syrian troops were unarmed non-combatants at the time. They literally tricked them. They were dressed up like border guards. Turkish media slammed for poor riot uh, coverage. And then again, to show you, Jordan urged to end censorship of local news websites. Yemen urged to take immediate action against Al-Qaeda. Government troops hoped to thwart takeover of a terrorist group. 
uh, over country's biggest province. They just hit them with a drone strike recently, too. They've been kind of calmed down, just like in Pakistan. Again, drone strike after a while, right after the elections. Egypt to Ethiopia, all options open if you harm our water. So advisors to Morzai say Egypt will ask Ethiopia to stop construction of Nile River Dam, warn all options are open. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.